Aloha and welcome to Connection to the Cosmos with your host, me, Dr. Lisa Thompson, where I have out of this world conversations with extraordinary people. And today I am really excited to have on James Gilliland. And you're going to find out why I'm so excited about this. So first, just a couple of announcements. If you haven't grabbed my free 20 minute meditative journey to meet your galactic family and guides, make sure you grab that on my website, mysticmanta.com or drlisajthompson.com. And if you're coming to Hawaii, specifically to the Big Island, come on one of my Big Island UFO tours where you will see the night sky in a whole new way using the advanced generation three military night vision goggles. And I am hosting my next Connection to the Cosmos Galactic Retreat Experience here on the Big Island, October 2nd to the 6th. So for more information about that, again, drlisajthompson.com and bigislandufotours.com. So without further ado, I'm going to bring James on. Hello, James. Hey, great to be with you. Okay, so let me share with the audience all the juiciness about you. You have so much that I think we're going to have a lot of fun talking. James Gilliland is an international lecturer, a minister, counselor, multiple near-death experiencer, songwriter, contactee, best-selling author of Reunion with Source, Becoming Gods, The Ultimate Soul Journey, and Anunnaki Return. He is the founder of ESETI Ranch, ESETI Stargate YouTube, hosts As You Wish Talk Radio on BBS, has appeared numerous times on Coast to Coast, where he was the first to do an extremely successful global intention experiment for contact. He also appeared on Midnight in the Desert, Jeff Rents, Fade to Black, and too many others to document. He is the host of the documentaries Contact Has Begun, One and Two, The Uncontrolled Narrative, has been featured in Ancient Aliens, Mount Adams with John Vivanco, The History Channel, UFOs Then and Now, UFO Hotspots, ABC, Fox News, BBC, Danny Dyer Special, and Paranormal State. And he is the facilitator of many Eastern disciplines. That is quite the mouthful, quite the, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I was so interested in how you got started in all of this. Like, how did you grow up? Like spiritual, religious, something else? Yeah. Give us the journey of getting into all of this stuff. I think that one of the key things is I never grew up. You know, it's like the people that know me, they 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 go, boy, you've got like a 17-year-old sense of humor. And I said, yeah, I'm going to keep it. But uh, the, uh, and I'm always like PC and correct too. So I have fun with that because I think that's a form of mind control, you know, but, but anyway, the, um, God, I don't know where to start. I, I, I had, uh, I was dying in the hospital at five years old and, and, uh, a woman kept appearing to me and she talked to me and stroked my head and I had bronchial pneumonia and, and, you know, I would get better and then I'd go into relapse and then same thing would happen. It went on for several nights and then finally she gave me this substance to eat. So I, so I ate it and uh, it was like ice cream, but it wasn't cold. And I was never sick after that. I was totally well. And I didn't know who she was. She was just the lady in blue to me. Okay. And and turned out to be Mary, you know, Mother Mary. And we're not Catholic, you know, and neither is she. But, uh, you know, she's more of a cosmic being. But the, uh, that was kind of what, what really opened the door on one thing. But I found out later that I, I totally was prepared for this journey. You know, I came in to do what I'm doing. Uh, I didn't know at the time. But then uh, I was raised in, in Apple Valley, California, in the high desert. And we saw ships all the time. So it was just a matter of fact for us. You know, we didn't, we, you know, nobody had to prove to us UFOs exist. We saw them when we were kids. And my, my dad would pull over on the highway and he'd say, get out, get out. And we'd get out. And he goes, look up, you know, and here's these five ships hovering over the, over the car. And so, but he didn't talk about it. My mother definitely didn't talk about it because, you know, it was, it was, they just kind of, you know, shut you out of society or whatever if you talk right. about it in the past in that time period right but, uh and and then at 25 i had another drowning in the ocean and i went through the tunnel of light everybody talks about and i ended up in that plane of bliss and and so uh when i came back when i returned it started like a, a major 
40 year plus journey uh, studying with lamas and yogis and masters and trying to understand what happened and recreate the experience. Wow. Okay. So then um, ultimately then what, when did you start the East City Ranch? So that, and just for people who don't know where East City is, that's in yes. Washington state. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's if, the base, base of Mount Adams in Washington state. And it's a known UFO hotspot. I didn't know that at the time because I was, looking for uh i was going to do a retreat center a spiritual retreat center and do it was kind of trauma-based clearing because when you clear the wounds and traumas and wrong conclusions from past experiences that opens the door to contact because you raise yeah. your frequencies and these are very high frequency beings hopefully that's who you're working with There's right other, other ones you don't want to work with and so we would teach people how to heal unseen negative influences how to keep yourself shielded how to you know, make your own personal contact with creator and these higher dimensional beings. And, and that's what I was on the journey to do. I, I didn't really, you know, the UFO thing wasn't really part of it. Although it, it is now, you know, I mean, it is, I didn't know at the time. Yeah. And, and so while I had visions of the ranch and I kept seeing it over and over again, and I saw this beautiful mountain, this river and this, the, the land right next to the river and, and, uh, I kept seeing the words little mountain and I did make sense. I go, why am I seeing little mountain? I mean, there's this massive mountain in front of me and it didn't make any sense. And I found out later the ranch was on a little mountain road oh. <laughs> and there's a little mountain behind us, you know, so it didn't make sense yeah. at the time. And, you know, visions really make, don't make sense until you, until you're there in the middle of it. And then you go, whoa, okay, now it makes sense. You know, like, uh, but, uh, what was weird is I, I used a divining rods and a pendulum and I found it on a map. And then I threw the map in the closet, forgot about it. And then there's a, a bunch of syn synchronistic events that happened that brought me right to, uh, to Hood River, which is right across the river from the mountain. You know, mm -hmm. so it's, and I got back and I pulled the map and I go, my God, I'm right, I'm right there, you know. So, but when I ended up on the ranch, the first, when I found the ranch, I go, I was standing outside and there's this giant lenticular cloud. It was bright orange and lit up underneath. And I go, whoa, that's interesting. And then I watched it just morph into these fingers going up in the sky, all different colors. It was like a scene out of like an Old Testament movie or something like that. And I looked up and there's two eagles circling over my head. And I went, oh my God, you know, and I had tears running down my eyes and everything. And I go, yeah, this is it. And I go, this is the spot. You know, so I, I, I had a house in Santa Cruz and I sold it and put, used it as a down payment to buy the ranch. And, and so I bought the ranch and then, you know, 40 years later, almost, I think it's 39 years, something like that. It's now it's, now it's a uh, East Eddy. Okay. So you've had the ranch that long? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, and okay, so I was on your website yesterday because I know that you have fantastic videos of mm -hmm. craft, um, you know, around Mount Adams on your property and nearby. And so if because I do night sky watch tours here, I want you to tell people, you know, kind of what you offer at the ranch and then we'll talk about other things. Okay. Um, you know, we have a, a, a lot of things there. We do a lot of process oriented therapy, counseling work. We have uh, yoga classes and really powerful yoga classes that are really plugged into Babaji and the masters come in, people feel them. And then we do um, herbal workshops uh, and we have some major herbalists that are just incredible. Uh, they come and teach those. And we, we do a little bit of everything. We do sky watches there and people come on the weekend and, and usually Thursday through Sunday, we have the sky watches. And, and I, I feel it's really important for people to have their own experience. It's not just somebody telling them right. what's happening. And, and the ranch there is on a vortex. And it's even on a map, the government maps, they have it in this purple zone, they call it. And it's a zone where there's really weird magnetic, magnetic anomalies. And so, uh, and then Mount Adams, I didn't know it at the time, but it has a long history of UFO activity back to Kenneth Arnold. When yeah. he, he sighted the ships, uh, he said that he lost sight of them when they landed on the western slopes of Mount Adams. He was between Rainier 
and Mount Adams. And that's our front yard, you know, where they landed. But there's actually a door that opens on the mountain and ships go in and out of it. So uh, underneath that mountain is, is uh, there's like a galactic airport in the mountain and there's other levels to it down to the inner earth. And there's, there's beings, it, it, you know, this is a walk on the wild side. There's everything from fairies to Bigfoot to gnomes to elven beings. And they're all interchangeable. They all work together. Mm -hmm. uh, ascended masters, extremely, you know, goes up to like 13th dimensional beings. And, and they all work together. And, but unfortunately on earth, we kind of, we're all divided into all these you know, races and religions and things like that. And we need to let go of that. Agreed. Get back in, yeah. Get back into unity consciousness, but yeah, but the, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a whole different story there, but people come and they see the door open and they see the ships come in and out and, and the kids see the little fairies and the gnomes running around and they see Bigfoot who's not this nasty beast that people try to make it. Yeah. It's, it's a very, very, it's very evolved in nature. It's a very spiritually evolved being and they can appear and disappear and they can become an orb and fly through the forest and then reappear. And they're, they're phenomenal beings, you know, and I, I think there's different categories of Bigfoot, just like there's some beautiful humans out there and there's some nasty humans too. There might be some, right. <laughs> but I think, you know, you Bigfoot will greet you with how you greet him, you know, or her or whatever. If you go out there with a gun and, try to hunt it and you're in your ego, you know, you're probably gonna have a bad experience. But if, if you go out there with an open heart and a loving mind and pure intent and, you know, play a flute and bring some peanut butter and some apples for it, you know, you might have an amazing experience. Yeah, I have a couple of friends that have had um, really extraordinary yeah. Bigfoot experiences where, yeah. you know, my friend April, who I've had on the show a couple of times, um, they give her gifts. They actually, she channels them now too. And then, uh -huh my friend Jason, he was in Colorado and just, you know, out camping for a few days by himself and really in a high vibe. And they came and joined him at the campfire. Uh -huh. Yeah. We've had a lot of, of Native American. I have, I'm friends with a lot of elders, Native American elders of different nations and they come and do ceremony there and they recharge and heal. And, and we've had a lot of Bigfoot come around those and leave them gifts and things like that. It's really, it's really nice. And, I remember uh, Clifford Mahoudi was there and, and he just goes, he goes, man, he goes, I, you know, there's a Bigfoot in my, at my cabin, you know, he said it was, it was standing right next to the cabin like this. And I go, oh yeah. And uh, he goes, it looked kind of like a younger one. I go, that's Delaki. That's, he's a kind of a juvenile, it's a juvenile delinquent, <laughs> but he breaks all the rules and he messes with people and, and he'll let you see him and then he disappears and, and so he's, they kind of have a, of a avoid human policy. Most of them do, unless, unless they can really sense your heart. And if you're really, if you're not a threat, you know, and you're, and you have pure intent, they'll, they'll make themselves known to you. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, so um, as far as the like UFOs sightings go, is that like a nightly thing that you experienced at the mountain? Yeah. Or yeah, we see them in the daytime too. In the night, it's really easy to see them at the in nighttime because they're lit up. It's mm -hmm. harder to see them in the daytime, and uh, you know, there's and usually it, it's a working ranch, so I'm usually working my butt off there, you know, to like tearing, you know, getting firewood, cleaning up. It's a seventy acre ranch, and there's a lot of cleanup and work to do on it. And so we have really big gardens, and we have livestock, and we have everything else on the ranch. We we just have sheep now, which is great. We used to have yaks and goats and everything else. And you always had to watch your backside, you know, <laughs> with them. But uh, we uh, we move, move them on and, and, you know, we're just we just have sheep there now. But, you know, people don't realize if you're going to have a working ranch, you need a you need manure. <laughs> you know, you got to have, you know, you got to have manure to keep your gardens going and keep all your fruit trees going and everything else. And, and so. People go, why do you have sheep? And I said, well, we get the wool and we use the manure, you know. Yeah. Well, and people can see some of your amazing videos on your website. So if, do you want to share yeah. that website real quick? And we'll do it at the end too, but. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I can't share them from here. I, I don't. Oh, uh, just say it verbally. 
Yeah. Well, well, basically, we have ships just coming in every size, shape, and color. Okay. And uh, uh, different. We have everything from triangles to giant cylinder ships to, uh, again, every size, shape, and color, and treetop level stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just the whole armadas up there. We've, we've been filming it. A lot of people go, that's our government. And I go, this is way beyond the government. You know, we do have our own ships. We have our own space fleet. And we've been back back engineering ships, you know, since the, even before the 30s, the Germans were. Right. But, uh, but we have ships now that, like in the late 60s, we were going back and forth to the moon and Mars and, and everything. And there's bases there. And, and that's that's all starting to come out finally you know but uh, right. but a lot of people go well that's just our government and i said and the, and then other people go well, that's time travel and other yeah, everybody has different stories and i said it's all the above right you know? all of it. So that's yeah. what i think to people too yeah there's yeah. a little bit of everything and yeah. so now what's interesting is so we just recently were introduced by a mutual friend kaleo that i met when i was in sedona and yeah. um so you now also have a place on the big island yeah. uh, you're, you're a lot further south than me and so you you've been here three years yeah about three years okay and same as me and so and you just like i do you see activity every single day yeah yeah if there's clear skies they're here and there's kind of like a little some kind of an agreement or something i don't know they come at five o'clock in the morning every if I have clear clear skies, I go out in five in the morning. I'm gonna see at least ten ships, and I brought some local people here, some friends of mine, and I said, "Hey, check that. Just come over." You know, I was talking about the UFOs, and they're going, "Yeah, right," and they're looking at me kind of crazy. Yeah, and I said, "Come over and see for yourself," and they do. And and I have the military night vision goggles, but these are treetop level. They're coming in. You know, you can mm -hmm. see the trees and everything. And you can't miss them. And you know they'll see like forty ships or so, and they're just blown away. They're they, they you know they have to go back and he says, yeah, I had to go process a couple of days after seeing that. I had to rethink everything, <laughs> you know. But uh, right, yeah, we're we're right now. I, what I did is I got a seven acre coffee and magnet farm, and it was all overgrown and and it was really a mess. And so, you know, cars. You know, it is. There's cars and and refrigerators and everything everywhere here so yes. i cleaned yeah. all that out and and cleaned up all the vines and the coffee's doing now now it's all i stumped the coffee and it's all coming back now and, and so everything looks great it's all kind of redone and and uh i was i was working towards uh doing some events here and things like that but it didn't work out with another group i was with so i've got i need to find another place uh where i can uh, have some some groups or maybe do a, I might do a small conference here or something. I've just got to find a location to do it. Okay. Well, I'm again, yeah, I'm, I would love to be part of whatever you do with that because I think we're on the same wavelength when it comes to this phenomena. And yeah, we have one shower and one bathroom here right now. So that's okay. it. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> we're kind of really limited as what we can do here. Um, but uh, uh, that I think that's going to change. There's a lot of you know, I just don't know too many people on the island. It's, okay. As soon as I landed here, I've been in the forest. I've been just cutting, mm -hmm. you know, cleaning things up and painting and, and, right. and, you know, doing that kind of stuff, getting things ready. Well, and one of the things, so when we were texting the other day, I was telling you about how last week on one of our tours, we'd never seen this before, but within a 15 minute period or so, there were at least 40 craft going to yeah. the exact same spot, kind of near Jupiter. Yeah. And so I was like, do you know anything about something going on? One <laughs> well, that I should do the picture. And um, so you want to, if, if you want to share, maybe. Yeah, there's, there's some big meetings going on in Jupiter. There's, there's a huge, um, it's like a, I, I don't call it a space station. We don't have any, it's almost like a city uh, mm -hmm. there near Jupiter. And uh, they're having big meetings about, a lot of it's about what to do with earth. You know, how we're going to straighten this mess out down here. And, and the earth has been really infiltrated for like, it's, we've had tyranny for 450,000 years and it's coming to an end now. Mm -hmm. And they're removing the, the low level stuff. They're clearing all that out. And uh, the earth is going through a major vibrational lifting, you know, the great awakening, whatever you want to call it. 
Yeah. And so, you know, everybody goes, what is going on? Everything is so bad. And it's no evil. I go, it's always been that way. Now you're saying it. It's all coming up to be healed. Mm -hmm. And chaos is good because it's part of the healing process. We have to realize we're going to have to go through some chaos to get to, to where we want to get to. So, so there's one system is going out and a whole new system is coming in. It's very close to coming in where we're going to be so free and abundant. And we're not going to have all the problems that we've had in the past because we just have to eliminate the tyrants. And, and the thing about them is they're not frequency specific to the earth and where it's going. So they, they're taking themselves out. Yeah. They're, they're imploding. Their kingdoms are imploding. All the ill gotten gain, they're losing it. It's going back into the system. And uh, it's, it's a multidimensional process going on and, and, some people will see it on one level and just say it's the white hats versus the cabal, but there's so many other dimensions to it. And it goes all the way back to the source, you know, creator, God, grace, whatever you want to call it. And, and, you know, the creator said, we're going to the next level, you know, we're graduating, you know, get ready. And, and so we're in that process right now. So do you know who is part of these meetings? Are, are there any like hum, earth humans part of the meetings or is it more of just our galactic brothers and sisters? Yeah, when I was a kid, I was taken uh, by this really tall being before these councils. And, and they have a plan. They have a major plan. And I kind of know most of it. I don't really know all of it. I didn't know as a kid. I didn't know what I was in for, but they would take me and I would stand before this council and they'd deliberate and it was all telepathic and they'd nod and I'd go back, you know? And so I realized that I was kind of being prepared. I, I was, I was, you know, I, I don't know how that works. Chicken or egg thing. Either I chose to do it or they chose me to do it. I don't know how that worked, but I don't know all the details of it, but you know, I, I look at my life and what I've been doing. I go, God, I guess I've been doing it all my life, <laughs> you know, this plan. And, and I go, what is this plan? And, and you know, there, it's a major, people are worried about it, an alien invasion. It already happened. It's called reincarnation, you know, and so many people have star families have come in for this time to help the right. earth. And so, yeah. and so a lot of people know it and some people have a clue. Maybe, maybe I'm from somebody else. I never really fit in, you know, what's going on here. And then some people are just totally embroiled in social consciousness and, yeah. and they, they haven't figured it out yet what's going on, but they're going to get triggered. They're going to be awakened. And so what they told me is that they said, he told me, he said, like, God's given its best for these times for this shift to happen. And, and so we just have to all wake up and figure out why we're here and what our own unique purpose is and get on with it. And, yeah. and yeah. they're there, they're just waiting for us. They can't, they can push a little bit, but they have to respect free will and our right. choice. And so, so they're, they're trying to inspire us, you know, a little at a time and show us things we can't figure out or can't understand and, and to get us to start opening up and then, you know, once we crack the door, all I have to do is crack the door and we're going to go through it because we're very curious. You know, humans are very curious and we're going to go, okay, what was that? You know, people see a ship. What I told people, they go, why are you doing this UFO stuff? Why are you just doing the spiritual stuff? And, and I said, it's bait. And they, and they go, <laughs> yeah, they go, they go, what do you mean? I said, it's bait. The bait brings them here. And then, then I go, you want to know more about about your relationship to them, who they are and what this is all about. And they go, yeah. And then it just opens the door further and further, you know, as, and so, mm -hmm. so yeah, I kind of laugh about it. I said, well, it's, it's, you know, once you see a ship, your life's changing, you go, wait a second, you know, we've, this is real, you know, who are these beings? Why, what can they do? How can they help the planet? Exactly. And, yeah. And here's the thing that I've found really interesting and, uh, I don't want to talk dirt about anything, but I've seen in the UFO community, a lot of it was taken over by certain agencies and government and, and a lot of money came in and it wasn't, it was kind of dirty money. It was satanic, it was, you know, loose fairy money. And, and pretty soon all the people that were authentic, that wanted to talk about the spiritually and technolo technologically advanced beings that could really help our planet 
take a quantum leap and clean up the planet and evolution and everything. Those people got pushed out. They got one by one got pushed out of the community. And and uh, there's some new ones coming up that are 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 bringing starting to bring this message out, which is great. But there's been an effort to it's called the controlled narrative to keep the controlled narrative going. And so the, the game is keep them far away, keep them in the past, keep them scary and negative. Mm -hmm. And don't talk about the spiritually and technologically advanced beings because they'll put an end to tyranny. They've transcended war and disease and, and uh, poverty, you know, and they'll put an end to our game, you know, so, so don't yeah. talk about those. And so the people, I was told many times, do not talk about this. We'll yank you. And that, so that's what I talked about. That's okay. exactly what we talked about. You know, so I said, yank me out of there. And, well, and and, I'm yeah. fully bored with you. And I've also like, I get, I've like, you have been an experiencer my entire life. I know that mm -hmm. I came here to do this work and same as you in terms of like, it does open that spiritual door and understanding who they are at a much greater spiritual yeah. level. And so ultimately, yeah. And my, my mission for all the work I do with the podcast, the tours, what I write about, you know, everything is really to change that fear-based narrative of the government media yeah. in Hollywood. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they, they don't, well, I try to explain to people, I said, there's a unified field of consciousness and energy and it's multidimensional. We all exist within that unified field. And some people are just a spark and some people have ignited the full flame. Some people are somewhere in between. And I said, that's all it is, is that these beings utilize more of the unified field than we do. They're, they're been around longer. They're more advanced. Um, and, and there are some low level stuff and we teach people how to avoid that and clear that energy out. And, and we, we teach that in the very beginning on mm -hmm. how, and, and that's the thing that happens. A lot of people accidentally or in error or ignorance allow that other energy to come in and they're working with those kind of energies. So yeah, we kind of warn people about that. You, you have to live according to universal law. You have to keep the open mind, loving heart and pure intent or these other entities can come in. And, and so, you know, we have a saying, just because you're dead doesn't mean you're enlightened. And just because you're an ET doesn't mean you're benevolent, you know, so it's as above, so below. Yeah. Well, and I love what you said before about with the earth being frequency specific of yeah. the higher vibration that we individually are, then we, you know, nothing that is of the lower vibration can be in that energy field. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I also tell people too, when you first start opening up, they have a saying in India, the closer you get to Nirvana, the more the demons rear their ugly heads. So the greater your light, the more the moss come to a flame. And it's a test in a way. And, and so we're tested. And so we have to learn how to heal unseen negative influences, how to maintain a frequency of vibration yeah. and realize that love is the ultimate power. And we can channel that love through our hearts into every situation and blow it out, you know? Yes. And, yeah. And I found out some of the biggest, nastiest reptilians you can imagine, they hate the divine feminine. That, that something about the divine feminine just, just they cannot stand it. It's like mom's home, you're in trouble, you know, you know, or something. It's like a little kid running off, you know, it's like, ah, you know, it's like, uh, it's amazing. I've, I've never seen the, the and I, I know the feminine music can channel because it's more subjective, can channel more love into a situation than, than men, you know, unless you're totally balanced. But, mm -hmm. but I always tell people we, we have it backwards right now. Our leadership, uh, the, the, I think the grandmother should be in charge because they've been around. They've been around the block and they know they, they're wise and, and they love their, their nephews and kids and they love their gardens and they love the planet, you know, and, and that's what we really need to have that wise divine feminine in charge and the feminine receives the information, the masculine makes it happen. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so we have both of those within ourselves. You have to be subjective to receive guidance and information and your masculine side makes it happen. It's the doer. And, and so, so we got to find that balance within ourselves, but we went way out of balance in the, in kind of the patriarchal, 
program and the lust for power and wealth and greed and all that stuff. We've gotten way out of balance on that. So that's being rebalanced and, and the pendulum is swinging the other way and hopefully it can come back to center again, you know. Exactly. Exactly. There really does need to be that divine feminine, divine masculine balance. And that's exactly the groups that I channel the different, I, so far I've channeled 13 different ET races and a couple of them really specialize in one, the masculine and then the feminine. And so yeah. all of that is coming through. Yeah. The Palladians are more like a matriarchal society and they're very yeah. tuned to the divine feminine and very joyous and I tell people a lot of people incarnate from the Pleiades here and they and, and they get their butt handed to them because they they're so giddy and they're so loving. They, they don't realize that people might actually lie to them or steal or harm them or steal from them and things like and they trust everybody, you know, and I go, boy, you you need to get that Orion street smarts going, you know, because the, the Orion Council of Light, those guys, they went through the Orion Wars and everything else. And so they're more they're more grounded and they they're more discerning and things like that. And so, and I see that a lot here, a lot of, a lot of people that have those real strong plating energies, they have a hard time being here and you have to explain to them, Hey, you know, not everybody has the same values you do, you know, and the same beliefs that you do. And you got to realize this is a very wounded planet right now going through, through healing and transition. And so, you got to practice that loving detachment, you know, and, and uh, not take things personally. Yeah. So when you're saying um, the Pleiadians here, so are you referring to Hawaii or just the planet in general? Oh, the planet in general, a lot of Pleiadians have incarnated, you know, some are fully aware, but I, yeah. you can, you know, I, I can see them right off when I meet one right off the bat, you feel their frequency. They're just really loving and joyous yeah. and beautiful usually. And uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. And the, you meet somebody that came in from the Orion Council of Light that went through the Orion Wars and everything else. They're solid. I mean, they can, they're no bullshit. They're very, they'll call it out. You know, they're, they're different. And then, um, you know, the Andromedans and there's a lot of different Andromedans that have been coming in. Some, some are eight to 10 foot tall. They're mythologically known as archangels. They have magnetized light bodies. And they have this big energy field around them like this. When they come in, they look like wings, but it's their energy field. And it feathers back when they come in. Uh, there's there's blue Andromedans, you know. There's um, uh -huh. there's so many different. I've seen the little guys, you know. I've I've seen the, you know, little guys. I've seen the giant guys, and all of them, you know. Some some look totally different. It would blow people's mind if they really saw what was out there. I mean, yeah, absolutely. You know, well, so just, is. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Is there a group that you know you are most closely? Um, related to? I know we're everything ultimately. Yeah, yeah basic. I'm re really connected to the Lyrians, the Lyrans and, and the, the Felines. I work a lot with them and I work a lot with the Pleiadians and the Orion Council of Light and uh, and the uh, and those are the main ones. Pleiadian and the Orion Council of Light are the main ones of the Syrians. Those are the, the main key people. And then the Andromedans, a lot of times I'll call them in if I have a, a, a problem, but the lion beans are great. The Andromedans and the lion beans, you call them in and it's game over for the, for the negative ones, <laughs> or the ones that are in a learning curve, learning process, you might say, you know, they, yeah. they don't do too well with that. Okay. Cause I, um, pre some of the first group that really came in for me were the Arcturians. Yeah. And then, then I do a lot of work with the Syrians and the Mantis as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, the Arcturians, I've seen them. I don't work a lot with them. And it's really weird. I, I asked them about that. I said, why, wh you know, I know I've seen your ships. I know you're here. How come you're not working working with them? And said, so we are, but we kind of keep our distance. We kind of work a lot more, more from a distance. But they said, you already have a lineage. They said, I already have a lineage that I'm working with, and they don't want to interfere, interfere in that mission, kind of. Mm -hmm. And And so I've seen them, but I don't work with them a lot. Uh, they there's a lot of other people at the ranch that do work with them okay well and um when i was showing you the picture of you know when we were talking about the meetings near jupiter and the craft you you said oh that looks like an orion council of light craft yeah, yeah. and then i know on your videos that i was watching uh, with isetti like you were talking about okay that's a pleiadian craft so how have you come to distinguish what the different crafts are what they look like 
Yeah, there's two things that happen. One, but usually by their color, like the color of the craft. Um, the, the Palladian ships a lot of times are white or they're kind of a pinkish, pinkish okay. color. And then the the uh, uh, the, Orion, I mean, the the Syrian ships are usually kind of gold. Mm. And so so are the Orion Counts of Light ships. They're a gold, kind of a gold color when you see them. But there's a lot of ships up there that are have multiple races on them. They're like Federation ships and they have every, everybody's on them you know all the different groups are on them and so and so it's it's like and then the other thing is i feel them it's like i feel their energy and like my left side starts tingling and buzzing and that's the palladians i know it's palladian ship and and i have different body signals i feel them before we see them i, I feel them coming but uh i was out there with some military guys who are like skeptical or whatever and and, and I started filling a ship and I said, they're coming in, they're coming in from the, uh, from the West and, and they're going, what? And I go, yeah, big ships coming in from the West. And all of a sudden it came in, started coming in and it got bigger and bigger and it came in and went right over and stopped for a second. And then it just left. And, uh, and he goes, what, what was that about? And I said, well, they scanned you and they mm -hmm. came in and they scanned you. And he goes, why'd they leave? And I go, you're not ready yet. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> I said, you're not, I said, you gotta, you gotta drop this kind of, you know, in the interest of, cause they're there for kind of different reasons, but mm -hmm. in the interest of national security, we need to align with the benevolent ones. And they're the ones that really have the science, the power, the abilities. And, and, uh, and I told him that I said, you know, you guys are chasing around with your X F 15s and up there and F whatever twenties and, 24s or whatever and i said there it's no contest you're never ever gonna i don't know why you're wasting the fuel and your black helicopters and everything else that and we watch them they'll appear and these ships i mean these uh f-16s or whatever will come in on them and and they're coming in they're like coming in on them. all of a sudden the ship just goes gone mm -hmm. it's gone and then the the f-16 goes by and it reappears right on their tail and then follows them you know, and, and they play the cat and mouse game up there a lot. And they do it with helicopters, you know, they'll appear and the helicopters come after them. They just disappear and the helicopter goes by and they reappear behind it and they follow it around. And, and, and it's kind of funny watching it, but it's, 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 it's a waste of fuel, you know, and what they're saying is, Hey, rise to the occasion, you know, we'll work with you and, and we want to work with you and you want to help humanity evolve and and you know take a quantum leap in, in evolution but you've got to have the consciousness for it you you can't keep this war footing that you're on you know that this doesn't work for them yeah so when you're seeing that kind of activity with the um, military is that more in washington where we do have big military because i don't see a lot of military activity on the big island yeah mostly in washington we see that but here when I first came here and I started posting the ships on, mm -hmm. on I, True Social or Telegram, I was posting the ships on there. And then all of a sudden I look out and there's a, a Navy sh ship right in my front yard. Okay. In there and it's got all this weird gear on it. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. And I photographed it. I took a picture of it. And I go, why is that thing sitting there parked? And then we had some weird planes circling quite a bit. And... Mm -hmm. uh, and Peter Slatty was here. Do you know Peter? Have you ever worked with Peter? I, I have He's great. He's he's East Eddie Australia, and he I, was here with me. And we had two. We were filming um, the the uncontrolled narrative, and here at the island, and two beautiful ships. One was kind of a turquoise light ship. During the day, came in. They're hovering over the house, and what was weird is we we're trying to film them, and they wouldn't show up on the camera, but you could see them with their eyes. And this this plane just kept chasing them and chase coming in on them and turning and coming in on them, and uh, finally they just left, you know. But uh, um, I have had a little bit of not as much as I do in Washington, but I have had some some helicopter activity, and it was it was military. It wasn't a, a what do you call the, the tours? Yeah, yeah, the tours. It wasn't the tours. You know, it was it was a different one. Okay, and so, and so they they are trying to figure out what's going on, you know, but I always go, you know, you're curious, just come talk to me, you know, for a cup of tea or coffee for you and, and 
Got some nice coffee, grew it ourselves here. You know, we'll have a cup of coffee and we'll, I'll tell you everything you need to know, you know, about them. But uh, yeah, well, so I've, I am curious about your part of the island because so I live for people who don't aren't familiar with the big island. I live up in Waikoloa, which is on the northwest part of the island, and you are southwest part of the island, south of Kona. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the people that I've met here have seen the transmedium craft coming in and out of the water. Have you? seen that type of craft down where you are because i know south point yeah. is a really big like area for that specifically but it's on all sides of the island yeah i i, I know the airport here at Kona airport there's a lot of that going on there and then off of south point like you're saying there's a lot of ships that come out out of the water I, i've seen them just parked out there or on you know on top of the water Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a boat, you know, you can definitely tell the difference between them and a boat right. and, then, and then it'll rise up and go, you know, so it was, it was a regular boat or something you would know, but we have them flying here, like below, like right over the ocean, below the trees. I mean, they're so low mm -hmm. and I've got footage of that and, and we have a lot of like half treetop level ships coming in and they go down and land somewhere back behind us, um, somewhere on Mauna Loa. Okay. But uh, I don't I don't know where they land, but I see them going back there. So I think they have some kind of a base up there. I haven't even had a chance to here. I, I'm going to start exploring and doing more things. But as soon as I landed here, it was like 24 seven clearing vines and, and cleaning and painting and making things livable, you know. And, mm -hmm. and so, and, so uh, and, and now that's pretty complete. You know, I, I quadrupled the water system and. I had to redo all the plumbing and and all that stuff and so now we're totally off grid and we got all the water we need and and have some big gardens in and everything so we're good so it's a big food bank now we have a pond full of tilapia you know <laughs> and uh but beautiful well so um the movies that you made can you tell the audience a little bit about um what inspired you and then also what they're about and how they can find those yeah, the movies are, uh, they're on our website and we have ESETI TV. They're on those. If you can sign, sign up for ESETI TV, uh, ESETI Stargate TV, you can go there. And uh, some of them were on Netflix for a while. I don't know if they're still on Netflix. Because uh, um, I think I, I saw one of them and it might have been on Netflix or Prime. Yeah, yeah, probably. And uh, uh, what happened is these producers came to one of our conferences to, to, to interview the people at the conference. And then after a while there, they said, you know, we're missing the whole story here. This is right in our faces, you know, this is, and, and they, they said, we need to talk to James about, about it, you know? So I talked to him and, uh, and they, and so, so they said, let's, let's interview you and, and, you know, we'll put the footage of the ships and everything else in. And so we did. Mm -hmm. And I told them the whole story and who they are, why they're here and all that other stuff. It was in contact has begun the first one. And then uh, the second one we did ourselves. And it was about, it, it was more about the uncontrolled narrative. And then the last one is the uncontrolled narrative where we just say, look, this is why you're not having contact. And we had to get, we get, we have to go beyond Hollywood, beyond social consciousness, beyond, mm -hmm. you know, the, all this stuff and get and make our own personal you know connections and and go from there but but the uh it's all there and it, i just i just released a new book called um ufos the origin of religion and man and that one's a mind blower and it has all the levels all the different beings and everything on it uh in there and the stories and and kind of who's who in the universe and 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 uh, it's a real gives the real history of earth and and mm -hmm. you know, people don't realize if you, if you go by archaeology, you realize that the Earth's been colonized for a minimum of 300 million years yeah. and, and repeated colonies that had to start over due to meteor impacts and pole shifts and, and, and uh, you know, great volcanoes going off, things like that. We've had a whole series of cataclysms on the Earth where everybody had to start over, especially a pole shift, you know, everybody... You know, you're back to spears and arrows basically and uh, and so we've gone through that and so there's been the 
there there were these Aheans that were here like 600 million years ago. The Andromans were here 300 million years ago. And then you've got the ancient Lyrians, the Anunnaki, those were here. They mm-hmm. came here and those are the gods with the little G, the bearded gods. And then all these religions were formed around them, <laughs> you know, cause you got the Egyptian gods, the Greek gods, the Hebrew gods, you know, there's two Hebrew gods that people don't know about. And, and, uh, you know it's it's like people don't realize but i always ask well who created them Mm -hmm. you know i I said you know you guys are are, you know these other people are talking about their experiences with these bearded gods but who created them we got to go beyond that right and 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 did and did he have a mother (laughs) you know where's the divine feminine side and and so it uh and that's what i've been focused on let's get beyond you know because it you know in in Christianity, unfortunately, there's the Old Testament and the New Testament. Well, the Old Testament, the image of God is this jealous, wrathful, mm-hmm. uh, genocidal guy. You know, nobody can appease. If you say his name, you're crucified or killed or whatever. You you couldn't even say his name, you know. And, right. and the Hebrews called him called him Jehovah the Terrible. And and I know this is going to upset a lot of people, but but read the history. And, mm-hmm. and if you and then you then you have Jesus coming in, bringing a new covenant, a new image of God, which is the all loving, all forgiving God, and 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 so so people can't understand if you read the, read the Bible in the Old Testament, you go God's jealous, wrathful, and genocidal, and and angry, and and, and you read the New Testament, and he's he's like all loving, all forgiving. You go, is God schizophrenic or what is this? You know, and people don't understand the real history of earth. And if they did, they would understand that there was two. And 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 Jesus wasn't even his name. His name was Yeshua ben Joseph. Yeshua born of Joseph was his real name. But uh and yeah. well, see it's all been altered and changed and and uh, but you know, I go into that too, and and it's not to put down anybody or divide anybody, it's actually to unify. Mm -hmm. to bring the truth in and the wisdom in to unify people and you're never going to connect with creator if you're if you're going like this like oh god i i've kind of been a bad doobie don't hit me with a lightning bolt and uh and but if you if you know there's this all loving all forgiving god you go okay you know like sorry i did some things like let's cook up you know it's a different if it's it's a different way of connecting but mm-hmm. but my understanding is it's the one consciousness that encompasses all consciousness on all planes and dimensions throughout the multiverse, basically. Yes. And then most unlimited understanding is just pure love and joy and bliss. And that's what I experienced in my own near-death experience, you know, when I went through the tunnel. But uh yeah, it was it was I had I had a little conversation while I was there, and it was it was uh it was amazing because you're in this they call it the cradle of God or whatever. And, and you're, you're in this just pure bliss, pure. There's no words for it. And you're a light being you're unique, but you're one at the same time, which is a paradox because, because you're, you're a light being, but there's a greater light and a greater consciousness surrounding you. And so I was having a conversation telepathically with this, this source, whatever you want to call it. Or I call it, I call it God, creator, great spirit to cover all the bases, <laughs> you know, but, but the first thing I asked was, how can I stay? And, uh, and it came back to me and said, I never told one of my children when to come or go. That's free will. Mm. And I said, wait a second. That's not the, not the story I was told, you know? And then I said, how can I earn the right to stay? And it came back to me and said, you can't earn what is given freely and unconditionally. And I, I go, well, that's, that's, uh, that's that's definitely not the program i was told you know right and, and how can you argue with this just pure bliss i mean this love this just overwhelming and then so i said i said uh how can i serve how can i serve and and it came back to me and said what do you want to do what brings you joy and then the light went on i go wait a second i go this is just pure love and joy and bliss and when we're in our joy and doing what brings us joy and we're loving and we're blissful, we're closer to God. That's, that's the path. You know, it's really simple. It's not that complicated. And, and then I said, I, I want to come back and, and teach me about the true nature of, of God, you know, what it really is. And then I heard as you wish. And that was the last words I heard. And I was back in the body and the lifeguards were pulling me, pulling me in, you know, from the, 
but okay. uh, it, yeah, it blew my mind. It totally wow. changed my whole, my whole belief system. I, I say there's always a lion believe. So remember that when you're praying, I believe just it's always a lion believe it's always bigger. Yeah. What's interesting about that, if I can just share real quick. Um, so my, my husband, he passed away last September. Um, he committed suicide. And mm. it, what's really interesting about that is that, you know, I have received messages. Um, I have a lot of psychic medium friends who have gotten messages and what you just described of, yeah, there's so much more than, you know, to that leaving the physical body yeah. behind and, and the light and being in that state of pure joy and bliss. And so even though he chose to take himself out that way, it's, he's not in hell. Like he is, he yeah. has fully been, um, you know, back to the light, back to I'm source right. and, and able to do much more from that side than he was doing physically here. Yeah, that's that. I I've talked to people here on the island, and there's been a lot of suicides. And and they, I was talking to one woman. She said, "My son committed suicide, so he's in hell." And I, and I was talking to her. I go, "No, he's not." Yeah. <laughs> and she turns around and looks at me, and I go, "No, he made it. He's good." I go, "He's good." I said, "You know, he was really loving and really sensitive person, wasn't he?" And she said, "Yeah, he just had a hard time being here. Mm -hmm. You know, his girlfriend broke up with him and all this stuff." And and. I said, he's fine. You know, I said, it's not a good idea to commit suicide. I'm not promoting that, but it's not a one way ticket to hell either. You know, no. it doesn't no. work that way. And it all has to do with your frequency and your consciousness as to where you go, you know, period. And, and also too, if you're praying for them after they cross over and you can pull them out of any, you can clear the energies around them. You can get them up to a higher level if you need to or not. So it's, it's not a, one-way ticket you know it doesn't work that way yeah yeah thank you for sharing that and so that's yeah that's been my experience as well and it's just because it, it really suicide has really um gone up in the last yeah. couple of years and it might even continue with all the stuff going on you know on earth but um i love that you named your um radio show as as, as you wish <laughs> Yeah, 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 fit in perfectly. I was talking yeah. to another woman. She was, she was, uh, she was talking to her, and and it's weird because I get around people and they just start confessing or something. It's strange. They start, you know, telling me all their stories and everything. And I was, I was talking, to her and she was all really happy and everything. And I went up to her booth and, and was talking to her, and she goes, "Yeah, I lost my, I lost my husband," and. And I, I look over and stand right next to her. And I said, no, you didn't. <laughs> she goes, what do you mean? He's standing right there. <laughs> you know? And I said, you need to lose the idea that you lost him, that he's gone. Yeah. He's not gone. He's just a thought, a loving, joyous thought away. Right. And he's still right. hanging out. He's still hanging. He's okay. You know, he's, he's, I can see him just beaming, smiling. You know, he really wanted me to tell her that, you know, but, and I usually don't do that, but. And then after I do, I go, God, why did I do that? You know, why did I say that? You know, and then I find out later, it's like, they go, yeah, you came to me, I saw them. You know, and they're all, yeah. they're all happy. Yeah. Perfect. Well, in our, we're, we're running out of time here. Is there anything else that you'd like to share about stuff coming up, things that you want people to know about? Yeah, um, I'm going on the, I think it's on the 29th. I'm, don't quote me, but uh, if you go to, Corey Good's site, they have a conference there, and I'm speaking at that conference. And, and I have a I stopped going to conferences. It's in Colorado. Okay. I'm not sure I should have had that notes with me, but I didn't. But uh, uh, I stopped going to conferences a long time ago, and I go, well, I'm going to do one more. And then, and then just because I just have put things at my ranch because that we can maintain the frequency and everything there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, um, the uh i'm going there coming up at the end of uh april you know around the 20s i think it's the 27th to the i'm not sure but if you just type in um corey good it'll pop up or david wilcox it'll pop up or, or whatever so i'm going to that conference and then uh um at, when i'm going back to the ranch and then we have the self-mastery training courses and we have yoga retreats and herbal if you go to eseti.org you can see all that and then 
and all the books are there. You know, there's there's all the books are there if you want to read the books. And, and in each book, they're real. At the end of the book, I put in that technique for healing unseen negative influences. It's so important right now uh, because a lot of people, the veils are getting really thin. We're yes. starting to see shadow beings and other stuff around us and all these other things happen. So we really need to learn how to clear these these unseen negative influences. So I have those techniques. They're free on the website and they're in all the books. And and so that, you know, it gives a whole different understanding of the multidimensional world that we live in. And it's, they're, all the books are very empowering for the individual. It's all the big wraparound is bringing it back here, you know, to, to the individual. Yeah, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. And I'm sure that everyone watching has really enjoyed this conversation. And um, maybe at some other point, we'll be able to do some collaboration or I just- Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I want to do some more things. I'm getting ready to get out on the island and do some things. And so- yeah. And so we'll we'll do that, set something up. Perfect. Well, thank you again. And for those of you listening or watching, thank you. And I'll see you next time on Connection to the Cosmos. Right. Thank you for having well me.